Hey guys, we're up again with a long-awaited update to my initial pass on Enhancement in Legion. There's been quite a few changes since then, and this video hopefully will cover them all as well as I can. I'll be splitting this up into a few different ones to cover some of the more significant changes that have gone on, and this one will particularly be focusing on the talent shifts and the changes that have happened since I first went over them all the way back in February. As always with any of these videos, a little disclaimer that this is alpha, which after the last videos have shown, is important because things can and have already changed very unexpectedly and very significantly. This starts then at the very bottom with the overhaul to the level 15 talents, with Spiritual Resonance and Fists of Stone going, and Hot Hand and Boulder Fist moving in. I'll start first by quickly touching on Hot Hand, as Boulder Fist is a little bit more complex, so let's get into that. Hot Hand grants a chance on Flame Tongue procs to cause your next Lava Lash to be free and deal double damage. Given that Lava Lash damage is solid and also interacts with Crash Lightning, having the dual bonus of a free cast so it benefits AoE and a double damage aspect for single target makes this an interesting talent, and it has somewhat of a counter synergy with talents like Tempest, unfortunately where you can be overloaded with procs that you simply can't spend with your GCDs on top of having to maintain your offensive buffs, but at the same time, it's gameplay altering and interesting, significantly more so in fact than the talent it replaced in Resonance, as it has a non-obvious interaction with your resource. It also theoretically is performing better than Windsong on average, though obviously Windsong's cooldown stacking aspect could have some benefits with Doom Winds. Ultimately though, it's a good change and a much needed talent to focus on Lava Lash, which was missing. Next up is likely the longest section of the whole video, which is a look at Boulder Fist, which is a talent that replaced Fist of Stone. This was created to try and recreate the non-GCD locked cooldown juggling system by keeping the Echo of the Elements system in your builder by replacing Rockbiter with a stronger ability with a cooldown and two charges that also generates 25 Maelstrom instead of 10 and as you can tell from how long winded it is to explain its reasoning, it goes some way to explain why this talent is so powerful in that it's such a multi-layer benefit to the spec's gameplay. It's so strong then, due to it dealing almost double the damage of Rockbiter at the base, generating over double the baseline Rockbiter Maelstrom, and, to take it even further, gives the flat damage bonus and crit chance increase that Fist of Stone brought, but without any of the attack speed downsides on top of it having 100% uptime. And this all fits into one tiny package and one GCD. Furthermore, given that generally you aren't massively resource starved anymore, and that this reduces the effective GCDs required to maintain your base rotation slash procs by amping up the base maelstrom each generating GCD gives, that only makes the increase more significant. Based on some rough estimates that I have, we're talking somewhere in the region of about a 20% DPS increase when you take this talent on its own, compared to the alternatives that are 3-6 to six at most, which is huge for a single talent. As also mentioned, it does ease up some of the strict gen spend aspects that gives you a bit more reasonable decision making, but ultimately there is so much value locked up in this one talent's ability that it adds that I can't realistically expect it to remain as is in honesty, as much as I'd like it to. Now before anyone is worried that I just don't like it and that I'm lobbying for nerfs to it or anything silly like that, I would say it's actually my favourite talent on the tree right now and one of my favourites across all of the classes because of how profound of an effect it has on the flow of the spec and the gameplay when you're using it. It also creates a lot of very interesting options in how you manage your GCD, your buff on times, in particular if you're using landslide with this, and your ability to snap generate resource in a bad situation where you've overspent or you need a bit more to burn a target. And lastly, just making your generator GCDs which generally don't feel great on this or a lot of other classes, instead have a lot of weight and punch behind them because it's got scaled up damage. It also has the added benefit of being slightly more than one for one on a Stormbringer proc, and just under that with Lava Lash, so you're never more than one Boulder Fist cast away from getting back into your spenders. Ultimately though, the problem is going to come down to just how much is tied into this one spell. The self buff alone arguably makes it stronger than both of the choices, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that go, or at the very least be tuned down quite severely. It's also possible to go down a separate route of reducing the damage so it isn't significantly stronger than Rockbiter on a cast, though the most core aspect of it being the extra MP per cast and the charge system to weight it harder toward more frequent spender casts, I truly hope will be kept intact, as if either of them go, it's not really going to be fulfilling the same alternate playstyle for those who really don't want to be hard GCD locked, in the resource system that we're going to be getting. 
Moving on to the changes on the level 30 tier, Gust of Wind is sadly gone and it will be missed because it was extremely powerful and very versatile. So it was a great melee tool to have that blink in there. In its place is Rainfall, which is kind of a spiritual successor to our old Healing Rain from Maelstrom Weapon, tied with Conductivity. At the moment, unfortunately though, the values it provides is so, so negligible compared to the health pools that we currently have on the Alpha that I honestly can't see a situation where it's even worth the GCD. On even the hardiest of raid fights, a little bit of tuning here and tweaking might bring it up, but it's not the most interesting iteration of off-healing that we've had, and as such, I'm not a huge fan, and I'd much rather see some form of defense in its place. As an added note, Feral Lunge has also been brought up so it deals damage now, and it no longer requires Ghost Wall to actually cast. It is, however, still on the GCD, which for a charge is quite problematic to deal with when you want to get back into the flow of combat straight away, but you have to wait for that cooldown to come back up. Level 60 had a bit of a switch around, with Lightning Shield chaining to a passive buff that procs nature damage off hits. There's not really much to say about it other than it's extremely boring, and also very weak at the moment, so it's almost universally forgettable, which, compared to the old Lightning Shield, was interesting, but undertuned and awkward to use. This one is simply boring and weak. Sundering moved down to replace Landslide in this tier, and it still exists as the active option, and deals moderate burst AoE, but really, with the cost attached to it, it makes both this and Lightning Shield significantly weaker than the alternative on the tier being Ancestral Swiftness. So the change around hasn't really done a great deal to switch up the tier, other than move the best talent from Landslide to Swiftness, both of which are effectively quite dull passives. 75, on the other hand, gained Landslide, which is a much better competition talent against Tempest. So there is a far more open-ended choice between what talent and the alternatives that you pick on the rest of the tree than it used to be in which it was a locked-in Tempest at all times, and it was desperately needed on this tier. Spiritual Affinity was also lost, and this goes hand-in-hand hand with quite a few of the changes to Feral Spirit, which has made it a bit weaker, but this talent really wouldn't have a place anymore. And in exchange, it was replaced by a brand new talent, which was Overcharge. This allows Lightning Bolt, which has since changed to a completely free ranged tagging spell, to gain a 9 second cooldown and consume up to 60 Maelstrom to boost its damage by 1500%, which is equivalent to about a 400% spell power nuke, and it adds a 9 second cooldown on top of it. Whilst it's an interesting possibility to add a high cost dump and additional cooldown to your rotation that interacts with the resource, it's just simply not tuned in a way that it could be appealing yet. It also walks the line of overcomplicating the Maelstrom system when you have to balance its cooldown with Stormstrike's cooldown and then still maintain the Maelstrom necessary to do that efficiently and make sure that they're both rolling at all times. 90 has almost completely changed from where it was with Crashing Storm now having an actual effect, which it didn't originally. It causes Crash Lightning to leave a Lightning Consecration effect on the ground in front of you, dealing small ticking damage to any target stood within it's a simple flat bump to crash lightning's damage that is static on the ground, so it takes a bit of finesse to place, but its damage is reasonable. It raises crash lightning significantly enough that you will notice it, and given the alternatives on the tier now, it's the clear-cut AoE option. Next is another new talent, which is Hailstorm, causing Frostbrand to grant a buff, very similar, almost identical, you might say, to Flame Tongue, that deals small frost damage on weapon hits. It procs off pretty much everything that Flame Tongue does, and it leads further into the buff maintenance enhancing enhancement style, if you so choose to play that in the fantasy aspect of the class. Its damage has definitely been dropped a little too low over the course since it was added, but it's a relatively simple mechanic that has potential to be a solid single target option, with the caveat that it's a more passive buff maintenance as opposed to active resource management and strikes. And it also does play into the trifecta of elements if you want to play an enhancy style, as I've already said. And I quite like that. I think that's a cool option. It's not something that I'm personally very excited about, but given the alternatives, it is something that I'm quite willing to play. And it does play into some of the legendaries as well, which I'll be talking about in a future video. Last is Empowered Stormlash which is a just under double bonus to the effective Stormlash damage by adding one additional target and increasing all Stormlash damage by 30%. Stormlash is still very much in flux though and it operates quite strange for some classes and the base mechanic itself is quite odd as well. So it's still, even now since it was added, quite difficult to evaluate this talent. So I'll plead the fifth on that one until there's a bit of a better bearing on that. Level 100 saw a few small changes also, 
starting off with Ascendance. All the prior changes to its cooldown and duration where it's bounced around from 10 minutes with a minute duration and 5 minutes to a 30 second duration. They're all gone and it's just back to being the exact same as it was when it got added in MOP with the added bonus of the 4 Maelstrom power per second tick attached. It's still an okay talent because Ascendance is effectively quite a good cooldown because it buffs all of our autos and it buffs Storm Strike. Though it does have a strange interaction that its cost on Wind Strike did not get reduced when Storm Strikes did. So now it costs 60 to Wind Strike. So you can potentially go into Ascendance and not have the Maelstrom ready when you thought you did because Storm Strike was ready. But obviously that's the kind of skill cap thing that you'll learn to play around. On the flip side, however, there is also a what I can only assume bug at the moment in which resets coming out of Ascendance won't necessarily reset Storm Strike. So you can be waiting with a Stormbringer ready. So I'd bear that in mind, but I honestly can't see that being a factor in the future. That's very likely to just flat out go. Second, Fury of Air was moved up from 90 to 100. But in that process also became significantly less OP and its damage cut way down to 20% AP a tick. So it's more like a light tickling as opposed to a fury of air around you. But still an AoE option and neither of the others really provide that. So you're still going to take it ultimately. And, and the maelstrom cost to maintain it really isn't that high. It's quite easy to keep it going without it really feeling like it's impacting your rotation in any meaningful way. So it's a very passive active kind of AoE I'd say. The main advantage though is that it has brought it down from being a single target powerhouse that when you go into AoE absolutely crushes everything around you which people had definitely started to notice on the alpha. So it wasn't unexpected that it happened, it was just maybe a little bit too far and I'll hold out hope that it could possibly be bumped up a little bit more and revert some of the extreme nerfs. In the next follow up video I'll be covering the artifact changes though there wasn't a great deal and also take a quick look through the legendaries that are currently visible on the alpha for enhancement. I know a lot of you have been asking for follow-ups on enhancement, so I am really sorry that it took a while to get round to it in between the Demon Hunter stuff that I did, because I'd got quite into that after people had requested me to do those. But consider this a nice return to form, as it were, for those really into the enhancement stuff I do, and hopefully this has covered a lot of the talent-related questions that still exist in regards to them in the alpha, especially after some of the more recent changes. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch up with you guys in the next video.